Hi, we're working through the front end setup, and this is something that you do the really, you know, the first time you, there's a lot of tasks in here that you only do once that when you first set up. And we've already worked through the basic tasks of getting code installed and getting an account on GitHub. So we have Git and we have Visual Studio code installed. And we're ready now to uh, take a look at working on a project. Um, and for the most part, the work on the project is going to be the same on both computers. I will point out a few things as I'm working through it that would be different on a different computer. For instance, I will be working here on a Mac and I'll point out what would look a little different if you were on Windows. And there'll be another um, project that is built just the same way on Windows and I can point out what's different on a Mac. But in general, the work, once you've got the setup in place, the local work will look the same on either computer. So let's take a look at what we want to do. We're going to start by creating a projects folder on the local computer. And we're going to fork a project on GitHub. And then we'll copy that project from GitHub into the clipboard, open VS Code, open our projects folder, um, go into the terminal with a control tick, clone the project, and then open the project. So let's take a look at how that will look. All right, let's kind of work through these instructions. We're going to create a projects on the local folder. So uh, if we open up terminal um, and, you know, I have a projects folder already myself. So I'm sitting here in my, let's take a look at this clear. Um, I'm sitting in my uh, home directory, users, pelts, or yours would be users, whatever your local um, computer name is. Um, and if I do ls projects, you can see I already have a folder that's full of code, full of other folders. But if you sh you don't have that, you can do a make dir projects. So that says make a directory named projects. And if you click on that, it will create an empty folder. Now for me, you, I'm going to get an error because it already exists. Um, but for you, you shouldn't. And then if I use the ls to list what's in it, for me, I'm going to see all of the work I've been work I've been doing, but in in your case, it'll probably be empty, um, and that's that's great. So the next thing we want to do is fork a project on the SU Web Dev GitHub. So going out to this site, um, we're going to look for the Hello World. So this is pretty common. So we want actually this Watts thirty ten Hello World. Um, in this Hello World will be our first project. And it will help us to see, you know, how to use these tools we, that we've installed. So first thing we want to do is fork it. And that kind of means that basically is like making a copy. So it's going to say copy it from the SU Web Dev to one of my other accounts. And I'm going to use the Rebecca Peltz account. I'm, um, I'm going to create a copy repository on this Rebecca Peltz. So it takes a couple seconds for it to make that copy. You can see up here that it's forked from, you can tell where I got it from the SU Web Dev 3010. But now it's actually mine and I can make changes to it and work on it however I want. The next step is we're going to clone it. So we click on this green bar and just note the difference. This is clone with SSH. There's also use HTTPS. And we want the SSH. This gives us an address to clone from that's like git at github. And this is what we need in order to be able to push our changes back up to this uh, cloud repository called github.com. Um, the use HTTPS looks more like a URL. And we don't want to use that for this purpose. So use SSH. Look for this clone with SSH. And then click on this icon to copy to clipboard. And that just makes a copy so you don't have to type all of this address, this address to your code out. So now we know that we've got a um, we've got a repository, we've created a folder called projects. Now we want to open code. And so with a Windows, you might be clicking on Windows and then type in code with Mac. We're going to type command space and type in code. So we're going to, this will open up our Visual Studio code. Um, and 
All right, so looking back at the instructions, we have created our projects folder, forked our uh, project from SU Web Dev, and now copied a link to the address of that project in the clipboard. So the next step is to open VS Code and the projects folder. So I am going to use the spotlight in the Mac. If I were on Windows, I would type the Windows button and type to pull the and then type in the word code. And this is to run our VS Code application. And it opens up in this um, kind of generic window. And then I'm going to open up the projects folder. So here I am in Peltzer, and here is projects and open. OK, and then this lists, of course, everything that's in my projects folder. But in your case, you'll probably just see the Watts uh, 3010 Hello World, because that's all that you cloned so far. Or actually, you won't even see anything. At this point, you won't see anything, because you haven't cloned it yet. But that's what we're going to do. So how do we do that? Let's uh, close the editor close all of these windows. So you can see I use this a lot and I have a lot of uh, files open at any given time and when you open Visual Studio Code it remembers where you left off last. So what I'm going to do first, like I said, I'm opening up the projects folder and projects and then I am going to use a, key, a keystroke control tick and this opens terminal and you can also uh, do this by um, going view and then you'll see the integrated terminal and so this is reminding you that control is that up arrow they call it a caret that just that arrow in and then tick and the tick is like a backwards apostrophe and it's located on the keyboard underneath the escape key. So opening integrated terminal, if you control tick, you'll see it's like a toggle. So when you click it once, it opens. You click it again, it closes. But once you open that, this is just like having the terminal that we use to do all of our code installs and all of our work with um, commands on the command line, such as setting up SSH keys and such. Um, so now we're in a terminal and PWD, you can see because I opened this as the projects folder, I'm in the projects directory. So all I need to do to, um, to get this now to, to clone my project is to type in git clone and then paste what's in my buffer. Okay, so that is that command git clone and then get at github account name repository name dot get will do the job for me. So we press the enter key and you can see it gives me cloning into Watts 3010. Now I have a passphrase on my account. You probably don't because I recommended not setting that up when you created your SSH key. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and enter my pin here, but you probably won't get that prompt. Okay, and once you've done that, you are now ready to open up that um, that uh, folder. So let's go to File, Open, and we'll go into Peltzer and Projects, and then we'll look for Watts 3010 Hello World, and we'll open that up. And we have our, our project that we cloned already here ready to work. So there is our, I just clicked on index.html, which is the, the, the default uh, file that the web server wants to load um, for us. And this is what we're going to be modifying uh, for this intro project. All right, now I want to point out something to you in GitHub, this go live. So if you recall, when we installed Visual Server, Visual Studio Code, we added a plugin called Live Server. And Live Server puts this Go Live icon and Go Live in the status bar of Visual Studio Code. Um, if I click on that, 
it will allow me to preview and notice that it's previewing hello world this is a hello from Jane student and that matches what you see in the HTML so you're ready to actually run your render your HTML to a local server now when it's running it says port 5500 and the where you see that is this 5500 so every HTTP file runs with a domain name or IP address and a port and for local the IP address is 127.0.0.1 and the port for live server is 5500 so that's what those numbers mean and you'll see that this operates like a toggle as well so if I click it again it gets rid of the server and I see the go live if I click on go live it starts up the server and opens up my browser with that code. So now that I have a server going, I can preview my local changes. So let's say in the title, uh, I am going to make this, I'm going to make this Becky Pelts. And then I will also make this, instead of say Jane Student, I'll say Becky Pelts. And then I'm going to, you can either say File Save, or you can see Command S in Mac, or Control S in Windows, and that will save this file. And I can also do the, the extra um, option sh sh Command S in a Mac to save all. And there's also a user setting so that it automatically always saves all. Now when I make that save and I have the server open, it automatically changes it. Uh, they automatically loads the code into my browser for me. So it's the same if I refresh it. It's already done the refresh for me. And if I hover over this tab, I can see that the title has caused me to see the Becky Pelts there under the title. So I've changed the title and I've changed some of the content. Um, I can change more content and you notice it automatically updates. So that is how you can get Live Server to help you to preview your work. So let's say I'm happy with this work now and I'm ready to copy my code back up to github.com. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run some command line commands to do that. And let's take a look at the instructions again. Um, so we, um, let's see, we've worked on the project. We've cloned it. We've opened the folder with the project name. We've actually gotten into modifying and we control or, you know, if it's the Mac command S saves all the code. So this is Windows, and this is, sometimes I have to admit, I use control for command with Windows, with Mac, and I really mean command. So control, there's actually a separate control key on a Mac, and often command is what we really want to use. So command S will save it on Mac. Um, and then we've previewed the code by looking at it in the browser. And now we are ready to go back in with control tick to our terminal and issue these commands, the git add, the git commit with a dash M and a message about our change, and then the git push origin master, which will send it back up to github.com. So let's go take a look at doing that. Um, we've got this code looking the way we want. Uh, let's open up. The, with control tick and that is control on a Mac as well control tick Mac and Windows open up the terminal and we can now issue bash commands one thing I like to do I didn't put this in here let me add it git status the reason is git status is a way to check what I what's going on the state of what of my changes and you can see with git status that I have in red that I've modified index.html and that's exactly what I've done and so the next step is I'll say git add and I like to when I'm especially when I'm just working on smaller projects use a dot and just say go ahead and add all my changes to staging so I'm basically these three steps involve staging it committing it and then 
pushing it out to the origin, um, which is github.com. So I'm going to do a git add dot, and that'll just, like if I had multiple files that I'd change, the dot would say do them all. If I wanted to, I could say git add, git add index.html, but oftentimes you'll see me use git add dot. So the net effect is that I want to stage all my changes. And so if I look at git status now, you can see it turned green because it's staged. And then the next step is I want to commit. So I really am ready to, so git commit dash m and the dash m says I'm going to leave a message. And my message is, I'm going to say, you just, in, in my own words, it can be whatever you want, gives you a, a clue as to what you did during this stage of your work. Um, I updated my name. Um, and, or, you know, I might say something like added my name. Okay, and then now if I do get status, you don't see anything, but you see a message that you need to push to publish your local commits. And so I'm going to say git push origin master. Okay. And, oh, I'm getting my, my passphrase, which you probably won't see. And then, and you can see that it, it worked. It gives me a number of uh, messages, and, and you'll get used to seeing these. So um, it resolved all the differences, and it pushed it up. And it says two objects, and you know I only had one, but there happens to be a get file um, that it that it uses to keep track of that. So anyway, um, if I do my get status now, you'll see it will say that it's up to date with origin master and the tree is clean. So that tells me that I have got my code pushed up. Now let's go take a look at what that looks like on the github.com side. Before we go up to github.com, I just want to mention something that you can do with GitHub to see GitHub integration in Visual Studio Code may be helpful to you. Uh, let's add another um, bit of code here. And feel free to just modify the heck out of this if you want. Play with it. Um, you know, you're, you, you can write whatever you want in here to test out, you know, how this editor works and how it changes. So yes, if I make that change and I can right click here and say open with live server so I can go right from any page and there I can see the welcome. And the effect of this, if you look in this middle, this kind of scissors looking icon is that uh, Visual Studio Code is also keeping track of your changes as get sees them. So you can see that this index.html was modified and if I open it on the left I see the, the original and that in the red that's the <clears throat> line that changed and over here on the right is the green and I can see that welcome was added. So this is kind of nice to be able to see your changes, your diffs before you push them up you know in case it's not exactly what you thought um, but anyway, it's all changed. It's all, even if you do push up the wrong code or something you didn't intend, it's, it can be fixed with Git. So let's take a look at adding this change. Git add dot, git commit dash m, add welcome, and git push. So you'll just, those three commands, staging, um, committing, and pushing will, um, will be the commands that you need. Now you notice I just, I didn't say get push origin master and that's because, because I cloned this from origin master, it actually knows that it's origin master. It's not a bad thing to, to add that origin master, just like if you're reviewing your commands, you can be sure that, that you pushed it to origin master. But since we're generally working in, um, in master on the origin, git push will, will work and you can see it copied to master. So let's go on over to the web and look at, let's refresh this github.com page and you can see that I changed this a minute ago. So the index.html shows the welcome and it shows Becky Peltz. So it shows both of those changes. Yeah, and then if I go back 
uh, I can actually click on that message. So here's where your messages end up. I can click on that message and I can see that it added the welcome. So these are just tools to help you understand where your code's at and what you actually have out there. Now we're going to look at being able to deploy our code to the World Wide Web. So before we were, we were deploying it, let's see, not there, but here we were deploying it locally on the 127.001, which is actually called localhost. We call that localhost on that 5500 port with live server. Nobody but us can see that. That's only local. It's good for previewing, but not for really sharing. So now what we're going to do is set up the sharing. And you can do that in your repo by going to the settings tab, scrolling down to the GitHub pages section. And in this source dropdown, pick master branch. And that's because we're running our code on master. We're pushing it to master whether you say, you know, get push origin master. Um, save that and then scroll down again and you'll see this blue background and that it's being published. So GitHub is taking it from code in github.com and it's going to publish it in github.io. And if you refresh this, when that background is green, you can um, actually go look at it. Now you see mine says Becky, www.beckypeltz.online. That's my domain name that I've assigned. You'll do that in a future class. Um, right now, it's going to look more like HTTPS colon, and then it'll have your, your uh, account name dot github dot io. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So I'm going to right click on that and you can see well Becky Peltz online that's my domain name you can see my changes are in there my title if I hover over that I can see that Becky Peltz got into the title you can see the title on the tab um, and essentially this is just a renaming of HTTPS colon Rebecca Peltz .io. So yours probably will be your your name your account name .github.io um, and you should see whatever changes you created on your local environment. All right, so looking back at the notes, um, we've, we've pretty much completed. We've got our GitHub deployment. We've got all of our code set up. And now just in the future, you won't have to go through all of this setup. Basically, you will be starting at the work on projects and in fact, you won't have to do this again. This is just, you know, one time setting up that projects folder. But you'll um, go in to that projects folder and, um, fork, you know, you'll fork your project and you will be able to um, go into your projects folder, control tick and clone and then open that folder. So you, you, this is how you will work on your um, projects from here on out with all of your, you know, setup in place. All right. Enjoy coding. Happy coding.